you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. There you go. When the Iron Lady sings it, that's when you know it's official, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the big show. This, the Chris Voss Show family, the family that loves you but doesn't judge you, at least not as harshly as your mother-in-law because she never <laughs> liked you anyway. You know what I mean. Anyway, guys, we've been bringing you for 15 years all the smartest people, the CEO, the billionaires, the Pulitzer Prize winners, all the great people who write the greatest things. They spend a lifetime or in uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of hours, maybe a couple lifetimes. I guess it depends on the author. <laughs> uh, I think there's some Hollywood people that have done multiple lifetimes, or think they do. Let's put it that way. Uh, and they bring it to you. It's a concise little format we call the Chris Voss Show, and they enlighten you and brighten you. That's not a word, and brighten, but I just made it up, people. And uh, there you go. We have an amazing author on the show. She's a multi-book author, and she has her newest book that's just come out November 7th, 2023. The Rom Con. <laughs> Devin Daniels is on the show. I tried to call her Devon, as in like Levon from Elton John, because I was actually listening to Elton John last night. And, and we were just playing the I just playing the whole library over there, but there's some real classics on there. But Devin Daniels joins us on the show today. Thank you for Not, having me. Thank you for coming. We certainly appreciate it as well. She is a born and bred California girl whose own love story found her translated transplanted. If I can learn to speak today, I'm still on Elton John, I guess. <laughs> to the, I don't know what that means. Did he ever stay transplanted? I don't know. He's got so many albums and songs, there's probably one for that. She was transplanted to the Maryland shores of the Chesapeake. She loves writing contemporary rom coms with all the witty banter and slow burn tension readers can handle slow burn. Her <laughs> debut novel, Meet You in the Middle, was chosen as one of the best books of 2021 by usa today and when she's not writing you'll find her clinging to her sanity as a mom <laughs> chef chauffeur and referee to four children or sneaking off with her husband for date nights in washington dc <laughs> welcome to the show Devin. how are you i'm fantastic how are you no. I am excellent. I was trying to think of a leave on lyric I could do a <laughs> joke there. It's, a, it's an Elton, Elton John callback show. Uh, congratulations on your new book, The Rom Con. There you go. Give us dot coms, internet places, wherever you want people to follow you on yes, the internet. You can find me for the most part on Instagram at Devin Daniels Author, and, or you can find me on my website, which is Devin Daniels Author.com. There you go. So give us a 30,000 overview of what's inside your new book. New book. So the rom-con is the story of Cassidy Sutton. She's a writer for a female driven websites like a, a bustle or a refinery 29 type of website, a yeah. women's digital magazine. Yeah. And she's disillusioned with the dating scene. She lives in New York. She's frustrated with app dating and she's seeing all of her friends, you know, get married, move on to the next stage of life. And she's starting to feel like she's left behind. And one day she goes to visit her grandmother. It's her nine, her grandmother's 90th birthday. <laughs> and she's lamenting sort of the state, the, her sorry state of romantic affairs. And her grandmother pulls out a uh, magazine that she has saved from the 1950s, which had an article entitled 125 Ways to Hook a Husband. And she's, <laughs> she says, you should use these tips this is a great idea for you. <laughs> and of course, Cassidy thinks this is ridiculous and absurd and, uh, you know, antiquated old fashioned. Mm -hmm. And, but because she's a writer for this digital magazine, she decides this could be a really funny article that I could write, you know, here, I'm going to try out these silly tips and we're going to see how times have changed. And I got this idea. It's actually the, the list 125 ways to hook a husband is actually based on a true article from a 1958 McCall's magazine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that's why I say I, I, I can't make up anything funnier than what already exists out in the world, right? There you uh, go. And anyway, so she decides to test out these tips thinking that she's going to write, you know, kind of a silly article. And she decides to test these tips out on her, her nemesis, a mm. guy who is the co-founder of sort of a rival website for men who she 
she feels is very, you know, chauvinistic and kind of a, a bro culture modeled off of like a barstool sports uh, site. <laughs> and so she thinks, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to test these tips out on him. He's going to fall for all this stuff. And then I'm going to write an expose, which really kind of exposes, you know, his bad behavior and wow. that of and that of the readers of his website. Mm. And instead, what do you think ends up happening instead? <laughs> what? What well, ends up happening? He, he, he doesn't really fall for the tricks and she ends oh. up falling for him instead. It's a really fun time. People think that it's, you know, it has similar vibes to like how to lose a guy in 10 days and oh. the kind of rom-coms of the early 2000s. That's the feedback that I've been hearing the most so far. And it was just a really fun book to write. Mm. Um, really fun to juxtapose the, the sort of courtship rituals of the 1950s versus today, you know, app-driven dating culture. So it just had a really a ton of fun with this. There you go. And what is the title? The rom con. Rom con. You know, I'm sure you've heard the phrase romantic comedy rom com, right? So the idea is the rom con is she is conning him, right? This is a, <laughs> this is a trick. It's a little play on words there for you. There you go. The romance con. <laughs> Have you met my exes? No, I'm just kidding. I've seen a few. That that, that was interesting. That magazine uh, uh -huh. was it with calls? I think uh, it's that I saw it? Yeah. yeah. It's it's uh, the uh, January 1958 issue. There you I've, go. I've gotten my hands on one. <laughs> have you ever seen those old recipe things that they have where they do oh. nasty thing with like jello yes. and gravy? Yes. Have you ever seen those? Yes. Maybe and that could be another book where you do. A, oh, yes. A, a, in a, fact, a, there are there are disgusting recipes in this exact issue <laughs> that I have found. Yes, there's there's one for like a mince meat big pie it's it's what? so funny when you flip through this and you see you know the articles that they used to publish i think there was a lot of drugs going on back then <laughs> something going on but maybe you should do a romance novel about 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 you know a gal who uses old recipes from the 50s those nasty looking things and the guy falls in love with her i don't know or where he dies of uh, food poisoning uh, <laughs> yeah, you could do a you could do a thing on a married couple who uh, it's, it's off each more other. More of a thriller. How's that? Yeah, yeah that, that sounds like it. <laughs> we'll just <laughs> do our thriller things. But you, you tell us a little bit about your background for people who aren't aware of of you, yeah. so we can get them up to speed. Absolutely. Yeah. So I grew up in California, in Southern California, Orange County area. I went to a USC for school. Mm -hmm. I thought I would probably end up somehow in the entertainment industry. And shortly after graduating, I ended up meeting my husband and moved across the country to Maryland. So the enter entertainment industry kind of got put on the back burner there, no longer being in Los Angeles. But anyways, I've been living in Maryland now for about 18 years, promptly had four children. And it was when I was home with my fourth child, uh, baby, that I was like, you know, what am I going to do next? You know, it's, it's a challenge to work outside the home when you have all these kids. And what can I do work wise, you know, that would allow me to have the flexibility I'm looking for. And so I have always been a, a avid, avid reader. And while I didn't really consider the idea of writing, you know, I, I did not study creative writing or anything in college. I just thought, you know, I read so much and I frequently get kind of annoyed with the books I'm, re I'm reading because I, I think, you know, I pick it up and I think the idea is so great, but then I get like annoyed by the execution as I'm reading it. And uh -oh. I'm thinking, oh, you know, maybe I would have done this differently or whatever. And I really kind of just set a challenge for myself. Well, what if, mm -hmm. what if I tried to write my own book? You know, what would that look like? Mm -hmm. And my husband, you know, encouraged me to do it. And so I kind of just ju jumped, you know, in, I dove in head first. And, you know, the first book I wrote ended up being my first book, Meet You in the Middle. Mm -hmm. was an across the aisle romance between a Democrat staffer and a Republican staffer. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And this, the, that book came out in 2021 and I had, you know, I have proximity to Washington DC. So I was able to do some really interesting oh, research there you go. Uh, about it. And it was a really fun book to write. It's an enemies to lovers trope. And it really was just a great time. It was, that was my first foray into writing. And, you know, it's kind of unusual and, and fascinating to me that I was able to, to really, you know, make it work. And now I'm an author. That's what I like. All of a sudden I'm an author now. <laughs> so. <laughs> there you go. So yeah. was it, was it kind of like, who was it? Was it Mary Madeline? Yes. yes they, yep. They were models for me. There was a, there was a few, <laughs> there's a few kind of famous, yeah. the aisle couples out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hopefully it was with better looking people on James's <laughs> side because I, I like James, but he looks like a skull all the time. <laughs> and what Mary Mary was a hot, she was hot. <laughs> uh, and what she saw in him, I have no idea. But 
<laughs> well, they seem to have made it work. You know, they've been married yeah, for a long time. They have been married they're, they're for a, a long time. They're a success story. Maybe, maybe that's the true success. Marry someone who <laughs> looks like the Ghost Rider or something. Uh, <laughs> he just, he just has this that thing sort of going on. But I don't know. Maybe he's really good in bed. I don't know. Uh, so there you go. That could be it. On the, some of the characters that you had in the book, mm -hmm. uh, how did you go about developing the characters, and and what did you hope your readers will love about them? You know, I wanted to pick characters who are you know approaching thirty, early thirties, who are kind of at a a crossroads in their life. Like they are, mm -hmm. like so. My main character, Cassidy, she's a writer, but she's a little bit stagnant in her job. She's trying to figure out what's next. She's always wanted to write a book, but she can't really figure out the idea that she wants, or she's just, I would say, challenged in actually like taking the steps to to write this book. And I think as a writer, I can I can relate to that, obviously. My main character, my hero, Jack, he's also in a crossroads of his life where he's founded this website that's become really successful and he's trying to figure out what his next steps are. It's always really fun to come up with these character arcs and to figure out how these two people and their different their different dreams are going to intersect and how they're mm -hmm. really also follows a specific path, you know, alongside their professional careers. I really try to, to make my characters very well-rounded. Conflict isn't just a relationship, but there's also, you know, professional aspects and also personal, you mm. know, familial relationships that are uh, sprinkled in there as well. Ah, those familiar <laughs> relationships. <laughs> they're always getting in there and mucking up, like the joke we always tell on the show about the, yeah, your mother-in-law didn't like him. Uh, <laughs> so how do you how do you balance romance and comedy in your writing when you approach when that's you approach a, it? That's a great question. In fact, that's one of the biggest challenges that I have. And when you're writing romantic comedy. I have some specific rules that I try to follow, which is that to be classified as a comedy, I think you need to have a, a few recipe items. Mm. One of them is, you know, very funny dialogue. And that's like the banter between the characters where you're laughing out loud as the reader at, you know, how they're, they're back and forth. That's one. Two would be funny situations. So in this book, you know, these, these 1950s tips that she's testing out on him are very, are off the rails, you know, very funny, and he doesn't really know how to react to them. And so that's sort of like a humorous situation. The third thing for me is the, like a humorous voice, you know, her, her narrative in her own head, her inner monologue is also funny. It's just, it's just about like how, how clever you can make your writing and, and, just, I don't know, I, I, I think of it as, as like you're trying to surprise and delight the reader. Mm -hmm. And for, for romantic comedy, it is very different than just a pure like romance because the, the comedic aspect is, you know, hugely important. But also you want to make sure that your comedy does not overshadow the actual intensity of the romance, which it, the reader is really looking for that really intense romance that they can get very emotionally attached to. One of the things I try to do as I'm writing is if a specific scene that I'm in is meant to be more of an emotional scene or have some sort of you know climactic intensity that I'm not trying to go real crazy with the comedy. I, I would pull it back in those situations. And then in other situations, if it's if the comedy is the main emotion I want people to be, to be feeling, then I might ramp it up. Ah, there you yeah. go. There you go. So is there a favorite scene that you enjoyed writing that you can <laughs> tease out to us or, you know, we can't give away the middle oh, of the gosh, end of the novel? Yeah. Or there's a scene in the middle um, where she, go she goes on a series of dates with him and she decides to go on a double date with her sister and her brother-in-law and she, and she goes out with this guy. And um, it's, it's just a, a comedy of errors uh, that goes on at this double date as she's trying to, to trick this guy. She's also trying to play it off, you know, to her sister and her brother-in-law so that they don't you know, know what, what's going on. It's, it's, there's a lot, there's a lot happening. It, it very much feels like a, a movie scene, you know, where you, where you have sort of a rapid fire, a lot of different people like at a dinner table, all, you know, thinking and saying different things and no one's following <laughs> what the other person is doing. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot, I had a lot of fun with that one. The, is, is there any, is there any handkerchief dropping scenes? Remember how in the fifties they would always, you know. So I, I, this is very specifically mentioned in there because that <laughs> is really, that is one of the, so in this, in this McCall's magazine, that's one of the tips. One of the tips says dropping the handkerchief still works. That's one of the, how to hook a husband. <laughs> tips. Um, do you want me to read you a few? To, to yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. Okay. I was just actually searching for him online. Okay. I was so the, the, the actual article is 129. I changed it to 125 for my book, but here's just a few of them. Okay. Get a dog and walk it. <laughs> <laughs> Have your car break down at strategic places. 
<laughs> if your car break down at strategic places. Oh, look in the census reports for places with the most single men. Nevada has 125 males for every 100 females. Holy crap. That was, <laughs> that's, a place to, that's a place to be. How about this? Read the obituaries to find eligible widowers. There's <laughs> <laughs> women still doing that now, maybe. I don't know. I've got some more for you. <laughs> I, I actually pulled up the PDF. This is funny as hell to read it. Okay. And you know, the sort of the interesting thing about writing this is that some of these tips are actually legit. Like I would say mm -hmm. some of these are smart and I think you could still use today. You know, others not so much. You know, for example, um be friendly to ugly men. <laughs> okay, I yeah. was just reading that. I was gonna say that. Be friendly and ugly men. And there was one about here that I liked that was about a wallflower. A wallflower. It says like cultivate the wallflowers because you you might find a diamond in the rough. And I kind of like that, you know, find a shy guy. So walk up to him and tell him you need some advice. That's a good there one. You go. Number three, gonna, here you go. Dropping the handkerchief still works. I'm gonna go put the number seventeen. Be friendly to ugly men in my <laughs> Tinder profile photos. How about this one? Stand in a corner and cry softly. Chances are good. <laughs> We'll come over to find out what's wrong. So oh, wow. you know, I had a lot of fun trying to figure out how to incorporate all these tips into the book. I mean, obviously I couldn't get 125 into it, but had them really sprinkled throughout. And and my main character, of course, is trying to figure out what, what are the ones that I can really do to this guy to throw him off. <laughs> and, you know, of course, you know, getting to write like his reactions to these just absurd <laughs> things that she's doing. It was also a lot of fun. So there you go. Number 33, carry a hat box. That gets me every time. <laughs> Every How about thirty four? Wear a band aid because people always yeah. ask what happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's, there's just the, the dropping the handkerchief uh, number fairies and widowers. There's a bunch about that. What like what is this one? Fifty eight. Get a sunburn. I mean, I don't I don't get it, but I'm I'm curious about it. I guess, yeah. Order, your, order your steak rare. Number forty five. <laughs> laugh at his jokes as opposed to what crying. I mean, I, but I think that's pretty good. You know, flatter him, ask him for advice. Yeah. This one I used in the book in a key scene, accidentally have your purse fly open and scattering its contents all over the street. I mean, these are, these are, you know, very fun, neat, cute suggestions. <laughs> and I think, you know, I, I think there's some, some gems. In there you go. Well, I'm sure you could be able to create a lot of funny stuff off this. Yep. Use an ashtray. Don't crush out those cigarettes and coffee cups. Damn it. Doesn't say damn it. <laughs> Get that fresh scrubbed look by scrubbing. <laughs> what about, there's one in here about like send a letter to his mom and ask for her favorite recipes. <laughs> <laughs> See, now if that happened nowadays, I'd be like, we need to check up on her. That might be a red, that might be a red flag. That might be. Just maybe. Just maybe. There you go. That is funny. Send mm -hmm. his mother a birthday card. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Uh, these are hilarious. Wow, it's very—they're all very entertaining. And you know, the 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 way I came up with this idea <laughs> to begin with was this was a viral Facebook post. So there was a woman who had gone to a garage sale. She mm. found a stack of old magazines. She bought them and brought them home and was flipping through them. And she found this article and she took photos of it and put it up on Facebook and it went viral. And so I saw this, you know, years ago. And I kind of made a note of it mentally. And, you know, there are thousands of comments on, on this mm -hmm. post because all these women were sort of debating, you know, which, which tips were good, which were, which were not, you know, would any of these still work? How would we make them work today? And it just, I, you know, anytime I see something like that, where people are kind of debating, I know that that's a, an interesting and meaty topic, you know, that I can use for, for a story. Turn wolves into husband material by assuming they, have, they have honor. honor. I, I put that one in the book because I loved that oh, one. Oh, did that you was, really? Yeah, that was one of my oh. favorite ones. That's kind of that's kind of me calling us. Wait, uh, hold on. That's probably <laughs> my thing. It's always the Beauty and the Beast. That's the, <laughs> that's the number one woman fantasy. Beauty and the Beast. Change yeah. that beast into yeah. some sort of beauty or whatever. That's right. That's and right. land him. So how do you feel the romance genre has evolved? I mean, clearly it's evolved from the 50s. But how oh, my much, goodness, how yeah. You know, I, I grew up on like Daniel Steele, you know, my, my own grandmother was passing like Daniel Steele's and uh, Nora Roberts on to me. And that's what I, you know, a lot of what I grew up reading. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, back when I was in college, which was like the early 2000s, what was big was Chick Lit. And you would, you know, it was like Bridget Jones's Diary oh, okay. and, you know, Confessions of the Shopaholic. I don't know if you remember that series. There was a lot of these, uh, what they call Chick Lit. 
And then it kind of, I would say, evolved into what we what we would know as a contemporary romance today. Mm -hmm. And contemporary romance is really just a huge genre, and it's so popular, and it's gotten even more popular in the last few years. And you know, it's the it's the best selling genre in all of publishing. You know, women cannot get enough. I mean, men as well, but but mostly women. And it's a really fun genre to write in. I mean, you can. It's just there's there's so much interesting topics. It's not it's not fluff. Women are writing about all kinds of things, you know, different issues, health issues, where they're, you know, incorporating that into into stories. And so I think if you are, you know, have particular things that you're looking for in romance, you can find it. You can find mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. There you go. There's even one on here, 88, learn to sew and wear something <laughs> you made yourself. <laughs> I love it. So you can't get off of these tips either. And this is the thing. I like, I was constantly referring back to these tips. And then when I was doing research, I was like, I'm going to find all the tips that I can. And there's a ton of lists like this out mm -hmm. there. This, you know, if you're, especially if you're a woman, you know, you, you know, you grew up reading like these Cosmo magazine, you know, mm -hmm. how to, how to, you know, entice you. Yeah. And so I, I pulled like all these interesting lists into my research. And there was one in particular, I put it up on my website. It's called things to do with your hands that men like. Okay. One of them was frolic in his chest hair. <laughs> like there, there are so many silly ones on, on this particular list that I, I had to incorporate a bunch of those as well. You know, some of these things are just like, how did this ever make it to print? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Along with the recipes, like how to mix meat and jello. Right. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, what the hell man. So there you go. Well, it sounds like it's much safer than eating some of those recipes that you <laughs> find in the magazine to do the thing. But evidently romance is still alive. And yeah, yeah. Are still buying books and killing oh, yeah. it. Any anything coming up in your future? As uh, some authors are, yeah, are, I'm, are, yeah, Go I'm ahead. yeah, I'm working on my third book now. There you go. And you know, I'm a bit of a slow writer, so it's a slow process for me. But it's going to be a beachy summery romance. Huh. And I'm really looking forward to that one. It's a little bit different. It's a second chance romance. You know, so a couple who mm. had been together in the past broke up and our force back together and we'll see what happens. There you go. Um, so I'm having fun with that. And yeah, that's really it for now. The beach, the beach books, the beach reads. Yes. Beach reads. Yes. Yeah. Women yeah. love those things. They you love know. it. You know, I love it too. I love it too. Everyone wants a great beach read for a vacation. And mm -hmm. uh, that's what I'm going to be uh, writing this time. There you go. Plus, you know, you got to have something to read while you're watching the the pool boy. So there you go. <laughs> Give us your final pitch out to readers uh, <laughs> on picking up your book and okay. reading Final pitch is you will laugh your butt off. You will have a smile on your face the whole time you read this book. I think it's so much fun. It's got a really, really great and intense and emotional romance, as well as just being completely hilarious. And I think that every woman is going to be able to see herself in this book. If you are my age, I'm 40. If you're, you know, dating in the dating scene, if you're, you know, a grandmother who's 90, you will have something that you will love about this book. So I just hope you pick it up and have a good time with it. There you go. Well, it's been fun to have you on the show. Give us your dot coms too, so people can find you. All right, so I can find me on devindanielsauthor.com. That's my website, and all of my books are you know available for sale on there. Or you can find me on Instagram at devindanielsauthor. That's the best way to get in contact with me. There you go. Thank you, Devin, for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's so much fun. There you go. Thanks to my audience for tuning in. Go to wherever you can find the best books on the internet. Order it up. The Rom Con. Available November 7th, 2023. Thanks to Devin for coming on the show with us. Thanks to our audience for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Foss, YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Foss, Chris Foss, Facebook.com, and Chris Foss1 on the Tickety Target. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time.